The following is a brief tutorial explaining the recommended technique for using the XP3D shaper. The shaper will adapt to canal morphology ranging from size 30 all the way up to size 90. Because the core of the shaper is a 3001, it will always shape tight canals up to a size 30. For canals naturally larger than a size 30, the shaper will not expand the apex but will reach up to and debride all the way up to a size 90 while keeping the natural apex intact. The taper created by the XP3D shaper is based on the number of strokes and will vary based on user preference. The typical taper is 0.04. The general protocol is to achieve working length with a 1502K file prior to using the shaper. For advanced canals like the block shown here, it is recommended to gain additional taper to full working length with a 1504 or a comparable scouting file in order to allow the shaper to spin freely and pulsate in the canal. An advanced canal is any canal where a 1502 has difficulty getting to working length. In basic canals where a 1502 easily gets to length, you'll go straight to the shaper. It is important to use the shaper at 800 to 1000 RPMs. The higher speed is needed because the general adaptive core. Next, you transfer your working length to the shaper. Here in the block we have to use warm water, but you don't have to use warm water in vitro. The idea is to subset the shaping into two phases. First we get to length using a gentle rhythm motion of three long strokes. If you don't reach working length in three strokes, repeat. It typically takes two passes of three strokes to reach working length in tight canals. It is recommended to irrigate and recapitulate every three strokes and especially after reaching your working length. Now during phase two, we are simply adding taper. You want to use five to 10 long gentle strokes all the way down to working length. Generally, every 10 strokes will increase the taper two degrees. So once working length is initially achieved, 10 strokes will get us to a 3004 in tight canals. Once you're done shaping, you should follow your irrigation protocol. And of course, we would suggest the use of the finisher, which is discussed in other tutorials, but it's not necessary that you use these two instruments together. Finally, you should fully seat the 3004 gutta percha cone to confirm that you have adequate cone fit. Next, you can apply and coat the canal walls with BC sealer using your method of choice. If syringing the sealer into the canal, it is recommended to make sure that you only syringe in the coronal portion and your tip should not be bound. We do recommend that you coat the cone prior to seating it to the apex. The XP3D Shaper is unique because one adaptive instrument is doing the work of an entire series of solid core NITI files. This means that in instrumenting larger canals, we are going to have to gauge the apex in order to select the appropriate master cone. There are several methods for achieving this, including gutta percha trimming, but a very popular method is to simply use your old NITI files as apical verifiers in your fingers. You can reuse these verifiers countless times as they're not undergoing any real stress. If you come up short, you simply drop down a size. Because we are shaping anatomically, many practitioners find that apical gauging manually with NITI files allows them to quickly create a round apical stop, which allows for synchronicity with the master cone and streamlines operation. Please visit xp-3d.com for more video tutorials on this revolutionary new product.